Awaken to hair growth. Awaken to hair growth because there is possibility to get your hair back. Awaken to hair growth because we're not told that we're able to conquer and overcome alopecia. Awaken to hair growth because I want to be a positive light and beacon for you because I've healed my alopecia and now I help others do the same. With different types of alopecia, men, women, children of all ages, of all races and ethnicities. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Alopecia Angel podcast. I am your host, Johanna Dolman, and today we're going to go over the three things that you should know if you really want to heal. And these are three things that you should really consider because it's really important and it's kind of like the starting point of your healing process. The first thing you should know is that being your own advocate is a process that I teach you inside the program, but it's also a requirement. You have to be your own advocate. You have to advocate for yourself. You can't just let people dictate and tell you what to do. You can't just let people, you know, doctors, I don't know, health officials, you can't just go by what they say. A lot of times you have to navigate and work around this. When I'm saying this, I, I talk about, especially when we see doctors, especially when we maybe even at this point in my life, I'm, I'm looking at daycares. And so looking at the daycare, looking at what's best for my child, looking and advocating for them because they don't have a voice at this moment or a strong enough voice. And so it, it's really choosing what's best. But in order to choose what's best, I have to advocate for myself. I have to do for myself, if that makes sense. I can't just be guided by what the state thinks is, is the best for them because it could be flawed. It could not align with my values. It could not align with my ethics. It could not align with so many things. And so this is very, very important. And I think for anyone, for any parent out there who's maybe visited schools or daycares or you know is always looking for a safe community for their children, you understand that you have to advocate for your child in so many ways, especially you know if they're in a certain situation where a situation arises, like they're getting bullied or something like this, right? You're going to go and advocate for them. But in the same way, we don't necessarily need a bully to have this happen. We could have, we could be pressured to do many things, to take certain vaccines or to just to follow what others are doing. And so this is important too, because you have to advocate not just for yourself, but also for your children in this way. And so advocating for yourself starts at a very, very young age. And if we can teach our kids to advocate for themselves, like to, to stand their ground when they feel and know that it's wrong, to stand their ground when they know that it's right, et cetera, et cetera. This is really, really key to that. And also not succumbing to what others say and what others dictate. And when I think about this, when I say this, I'm also thinking about my times that I've seen thousands and thousands of doctors in different states and in different countries always telling me something like, oh, your alopecia, well, you just need cortisone shots. Oh, you just need creams. Oh, you just need this medication. Or you just need this. Or you just need that. After doing my research, none of that I know works. None of it works long term. And on top of it, there's a ton of health issues and concerns that come along with it. And so advocating for, for myself also looks at looks like me doing the research, me doing the homework, me asking the tough questions. And a lot of times people don't like to be questioned, right? Authority doesn't like to be questioned. And me, on the other hand, I welcome all questions. I want you to ask. I want you to grill me. I want you to, you know, to really get into the nitty gritty because it's like, I've been there. I've been that, that mom and, and, and even that lady, right? That asks those tough questions questions to professors, to students, to doctors, to et cetera, service providers of any sort, especially when it comes to my health, because I tend to see things differently. A, because I've done my research, B, because I'm knowledgeable, but C, also because it has to do with me and my health or me and my child's health or me and my family's health. And so these are the things where being an advocate for yourself is crucial. And so if you don't know how to do this, I can show you how and I teach you how inside the program, but this is very, very important. You need to be an advocate for yourself because it doesn't just stop here. So even if you were to like go on and like heal your alopecia and like you're done, like there's always going to be another opportunity to advocate for yourself and advocating for yourself is going to happen. It's it's going to happen on recurrent basis, whether that's, you know, taking your car into the mechanic or whether it's buying groceries and, and they charged you too much or whether, you know, you parked your car and someone hit your car. Like in daily life, being an advocate for yourself is a huge, huge skill to have and to hone in. The other thing is that's needed to know is that no one's going to come save you. What do I mean by this? It means like not once pill 
pill, cream, laser cap, or, you know, new and improved medication, et cetera, is going to come save you and your alopecia. And why is that? Well, for many reasons. A, I've seen it from experience. I've seen it from experience from my clients who've tried certain things, they've healed. And then years later, months later, they come back and they're like, oh, guess what? I've tried this and this and that. It worked at one point, but then it didn't work again. And it didn't work later. And then it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. Cause that's what happened. All, all, all of these gimmicks are band-aids. So understanding that no one is coming to save you is that there's not going to be one pill cream or solution out there that's going to come and save you completely. And even with me, with the hair and heel program, you have to do the work. I can give you the blueprint. I can give you the steps. I can give you the personal evaluation. I can give you the recommendations. I can give you the coaching, but guess what? The one who's running this marathon is you. The one who has to put on the tennis shoes and run is you. I can't do that for you. And just like if you were actually running a marathon and I was your coach for running the marathon, you still have to run that. I don't. And so I can coach you and guide you and get you there because I've been there and I've helped hundreds and thousands of people get there as well, but you still have to do the work. And so this is what I mean by no one's coming to save you. You have to do the work. You can forget about your mom, your dad, you know, brothers and sisters and everyone else, doctors, et cetera. They're not coming to save you. You have to do the work. And the only way to do the work is to understand what those steps look like for you. And this is why it has to be personalized. And it's hundred percent personalized inside the program. The last thing I wanted to touch upon here is that no one can help you if you don't help yourself. And this is a big one. Let me say that again. No one can help you if you don't help yourself. And what do I mean by this? I mean that many times we block ourselves from the opportunities and possibilities of healing. We block ourselves just by our train of thought, just by our limiting beliefs, just by thinking, oh no, that's not for us. Oh no, I can't do that. Oh no, you know, I think it's too hard. Oh no, I don't think it's going to work for me. Oh no. And we convince ourselves. It's the ego who wants to keep us safe. We convince ourselves that that something is not for us or something's not going to work for us because it's more comfortable to be in misery. It's more comfortable to be losing our hair because at least it's a situation that we're familiar with. It's more comfortable to have the vicious cycles. It's more comfortable to not do anything about it, right? But at some point, it's going to be real uncomfortable. Just like the person who's obese, it'll be really uncomfortable when they can't fit in a, in a plane seat. It's going to be really uncomfortable to travel. It's going to be really uncomfortable to do many things that other people do on a normal basis. And so the only way to lose weight is to actually do the work for yourself. Again, the personal trainer can help you, can you know provide all the information, can give you a tailored program and plan, but you have to implement. And so no one can help you if you don't help yourself. And if you believe no one and nothing can help you, then that's where you're going to stay stuck in this helpless situation and mode. But if you believe that you have opportunity, that you can heal, that you can do this and that it's possible, you just need a guide, some, you know, in a plan to go with it and a map out blueprint, then you got this. A lot of times it's the limiting beliefs that we have that hold us back from achieving our goals, from achieving what we want in life. It's holding us back from living the life that we really want to. Anyone and everyone can be a millionaire. Anyone and everyone can be healthy. Anyone and everyone can be thin. Everyone and anyone can have lots of hair. It's just, there's a path, there's steps to take. And a lot of times people don't like to do the hard work. Let's be honest. A lot of times people don't like to do the hard work, even if it is for themselves. This is why we have created a culture in essence of easy fixes, the diet pill, the lotion and potion for your hair, the laser caps, the minoxidils, the Rogaine. It's, it's an easy solution. It's easy to put in a foam. It's easy to put in a shampoo. It's easy to put on cream, right? It's easy. It's a convenient society, but guess what? Convenient society does not lead you to results, does not lead you to real results, does not lead you to success, does not lead you to a hundred percent healing and hair growth. So be self-aware and see if it's you yourself that's limiting your own possibilities with your train thought, with your thinking, with your mindset, with your limiting beliefs. And also see, are you being your own advocate? Or do you think someone is going to come save you and fix things for you? You know, this is not a plumbing issue. This is an internal issue and we need to fix it from the inside out. This is how you heal alopecia. When it comes to being your own advocate, yes, you need to stand up for yourself. Yes, you need to be able to say hard no's and hard yeses. Yes, you need to be able to give yourself more opportunity. And it all starts with your mindset, saying yes to what you think is possible for you. Because even if you're a little scared, let me push you towards the fear. Because even when you're pushed towards it, you will see more that there's nothing to be afraid of, that only possibility and opportunity come your way. So if you really want something, you're going to have to work for it. That's the end. You know, that's 
the truth of it. You're going to have to work for it. I can coach you. I can train you. I can put you in the most perfect situation for you to succeed. But the work, the implementation has to be done by you. No one else can come do it for you. And for those of you parents who are listening, yes, you can do it for your child. But even then, to a certain extent, your child is going to become an adult. And those adults also need to implement for themselves. So we're not always going to have our parents around. We're not always going to have someone around to do things for us. We need to learn to do it on our own. And so I hope these three points really hone in and, and you know, bring in what you really need to understand when it comes to healing. Because again, it's not for everybody. Not everyone is going to heal. And that's the hard truth. Not everyone is going to heal. Just like not every obese person that you see is going to actually lose weight and, and go back to a regular size for them, right? And so this is the hard truth that there are going to be people who don't want to heal because they don't want to do the hard work or because they don't believe it's possible for them or because they don't think that they can do it. And a lot of it is mindset. But the other part of that is also, you know, implementing. You need to implement. You know, if you don't, you can enroll in school and be in school. But if you don't pass the course, if you don't pass the classes, if you don't attend classes, that's also going to hinder your possibility for graduation. Anyone can graduate. But I'm sure we all know someone who, who didn't. We all know somebody who didn't go to school. We all know somebody who didn't finish college. We all do. And maybe they were successful in other areas of their life, but maybe not necessarily with school. But just like with school, you have certain milestones that you need to do. You have to attend. You have to do the homework. You have to show up. In order to graduate, it's the same thing. You have to show up. You have to advocate for yourself. You have to understand that what you do is for you. It's for your health. I already have my hair. I already have my health. What I do now is for you so that you can get the same result in less time. But you have to believe that it's possible. You have to want this just as much as I wanted it for me, just as much as I want it for you. You have to want this because if you don't want it for you, then no one can do anything for you. I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions or concerns, let us know. We also have a free training going on that starts here shortly in June 8th, I believe, is when we have a free training that starts. So go ahead, go to our website, alopeciaangel.com and sign up for the free training. We look forward to helping you. Take care. Thank you for listening to the Alopecia Angel podcast, a positive light in healing alopecia. You can do this and we can help. Spread the word that reversing alopecia is possible by telling your friends and family.